I'm in here. Um, I've been on this issue from the beginning. I'm Dan Harder. I'm the director of the Arboretum at UC Santa Cruz. Yeah. yeah. Probably the most botanically diverse spot in the county. Uh, there's several things. This is the fourth time I've been in this sort of one way providing comment, and it, it's really unsettling being not getting any information after over a year. When is CDFA going to give up eradication as a goal? There are no studies. There is no proven success with this eradication methodology or the protocols you're proposing. Have never eradicated a pest, let alone the light brown apple moth, from anywhere on the planet using mating disruption pheromone. Pheromones do not kill. They provide a disruption behavior. And with the buffers and the sanctuary mandated buffers, there is no way you're going to eliminate this insect. So we need to learn how to live with it. So we need to go to places like Hawaii, New Zealand, Australia to understand how they control it. Really, the most infective cost, incurred cost in, in implementing the program and for countries like New Zealand and Australia are the quarantine problems that the USDA throws up because this is a pest of, un, in, of, of action. It causes its presence alone, not damage, its presence alone causes a quarantine uproar and causes certain things to happen in the government and it's wrong for this pest. I'm also speaking about native tortricid moths. In, that, in Santa Cruz County, there's more than 50 species of moth in the same family, which are unmonitored, unmitigated. They're not even, they haven't even made keys for these moths yet in understanding how to separate them. And you know how difficult it is to see them. And I've looked in, in uh, the traps that they're using for light brown apple moth. There are lots of other moths that are getting in there that look very similar to it. So there's, they're really, um, I'm, I'm afraid that not only are these native tortricids going to be affected by any pheromone or release of trichogramid wasps that are going to sting their eggs, but you know these moths are also the, the key link in food chains for fish, aquatics, birds, everything, and our, our lo beloved salmon, our amphibians, red-legged frog, endangered, threatened animals already. There's no reason why we need to throw another insect in there that could compromise these. So I call on the report that there needs to be effective monitoring of these native species of, of moths. There's also a lack of documented damage, and people have brought that up. We really need to be, be able to distinguish between documented damage and using these words like in your brochure of destroying plants. Yeah, a native tortricid cannot destroy its host. It cannot even remove the leaf from the plant. As and I know uh, Dr. Um, Dahl has said, it's called it a defoliator. Like, Alabama is not a defoliator. By its own biology, the leaf has to remain on the plant because of, if the larva leaf, the, the leaf that's enclosing the larva falls off the plant, the larva has to climb all the way back up the plant and is, is, is susceptible. The, the enclosing of the, of the leaf around this organism provides the right environmental conditions for it to grow, but it also provides physical protection. Lots of insects and other organisms love to eat these larvae, including earwigs and birds and spiders. You know, all things are already in our native biota. Uh, I'd also like to see the report provide data that, that LBAMF affects on native plants and native, in, in native vegetation, not native plants in pots like at the Arboretum where we see on na we do see Alabama on plants because it's there. They land on it there. But honestly, uh, what I saw today at the Environmental Task Force meeting is that they're going to continue to monitor urban and agricultural areas for the pest, but not wild lands and not native forests. Native forests, there's enough na native predators to control this, this insect already. And given there are 50 other species that never really get out of control. Economic impacts. We need to consider and separate costs, it's real costs of damage, real costs to farmers from this damage, this idea of quarantine costs, and really the real impacts on growers, as was mentioned so eloquently previous. Experiment, the whole protocol for this, this idea is experimental. They're thinking of spraying, as like they would an ag land, over 600, over 600 square miles. The insect already occupies 600 square miles in California, and they've got a, a real eradication problem here of trying to get rid of this insect, which doesn't need to be gotten rid of because the, the effects aren't real. The, the, the measurements aren't real, and there, are no, there is no measured economic damage. I'd also like, as the previous speaker also eloquently said, the history of listing of Alabama as an objectionable pest, an actionable pest. Alabama was assumed and brought into to force as a pest that we did not want to see on our shore. It was brought together with a series of other insects, and LBAM was never, never looked at as <coughs> critically about really what can it do, and really what can this little moth do, honestly. 
I'd also like to see an extensive literature review in this EIR of do nothing scenario. Really, the economic yeah. impacts of doing nothing. Yeah. I know EIRs. I, I know EIRs have to say, you know, what do we do? What happens if we do nothing? But let's look at it realistically. Let's look at it realistically about economically and otherwise, biologically as well, because I think that's been lacking up till now. And also, I, I really implore the EIR to be honest and truthful to really the impetus to why we've had this emergency eradication, why we're in it right now. And also, let's, let's, it is a paper past. It isn't real. It's all created on paper. The, the actuaries are doing all their measurements and multiplying from studies that aren't even relevant to looking at the, the insect modern and how it's being controlled and monitored. Uh, so really, be honest and truthful in how this is coming forward. <laughs> It really is to protect our. It really is to protect our trade partners, and we need to spend time convincing our trade partners that this insect is not worth the effort or the seventy million dollars we're throwing at trying to eradicate it. Because it's not going to work.